Welcome to my YouTube channel, My First Vegetable Garden. I have two channels. My other main channel is called The Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's first episode in Grow As I Grow is really making sense of seed starting indoors. And we're going to go, everything, go over everything you see here. Um, I'll explain it to you and give you some ideas of how you might start seeds indoors. But the first question I always get asked is, do I need to start seeds indoors? And you don't have to. Starting seeds indoors is really based on your growing season. I'm in Maryland Zone 7. I really can start growing uh, cool weather vegetables starting in late March all the way through November. My warm season crops, we'll talk about that in future videos, they can really be grown May through the middle of September. So I have a long growing season. I like to start tomatoes and peppers and herbs indoors, get them up to size, and I get better production over the season. So what does this mean to you? If you're in a place where it's more cold and you have a short growing season, maybe only two months, maybe only three months, eight weeks, 12 weeks, starting seeds indoors is a great way to get the plants to size so that when you put them outside, when the temperatures are warm enough, you're gonna get full production out of your plants. You can also do the flip side. If you're in Florida or a hot area, sometimes it is just way too hot, so you have to maybe start your seeds indoors during the hot period or the heat, and then you transplant them when the heat comes down. So it all depends on where you live. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold right now. So you figure out your zone. You figure out what you might want to start indoors. Everything doesn't need to be started indoors. In today's episode, we're going to actually get the tomatoes and peppers that you see right there started indoors. And I'll talk about them in detail. We're going to do a little bit of lettuce too. The lettuce in the series is right over there. I got that started. We can grow lettuce through the cool season. If you don't know, lettuce can actually freeze. The leaves can freeze. They're considered cool weather vegetables. So the leaves can freeze. As long as the root system doesn't freeze out, lettuce can do pretty good with the frost. Your tomatoes and peppers are warm season crops. They need to be outside when the soil temperature is really about 50 degrees. And I'll explain all this over and over again as we get along. I'm gonna help you become a better gardener if you've been gardening for a while and if this is your first time, you know, starting a vegetable garden, you're gonna be successful. Not only will I help you, but a lot of people um, who join in will also comment and help you out. All right, so give me a second here to focus. Again, I'm not gonna do a lot of editing in this series. Just going to kind of talk stream of consciousness. <clears throat> so we're going to assume that we need to start our plants indoors. We want to get a jump on the season. I'm also going to take these outside. Now, the plants that I'm growing, you can pick up at my seed shop, www.therustedgarden.com, and just keyword search GG, the letters G, GG, and it'll pull up all the vegetables that I'm growing. This series is kind of unique because I'm asking you to pick up the seeds locally, pick them up from my seed shop. We're going to grow the exact same, same varieties of vegetables and you will be able to see them from seed starting all the way through harvest. All right, now the seed start, the next question I get is what kind of light do I need? Well, right over here are my grow lights and I have a lot of videos on them already, but the bottom line is you need to have grow lights. As much as I would love for a window to take care of our seed starts, when germination is first starting, you really need intense light. And these lights are rated. Lumens is the amount of intensity of light. And you really need fluorescent tubes or bulbs that are 2100 lumens or higher. And you also need the kind of light, the color of light, to be between 5000 and 6500 Kelvin, that's the color of the light. So my lights are typically 2200 lumens and 6500 Kelvin, and that's the perfect way to grow them. In a future video, we'll talk more about lighting. So when it comes to seed starting, you have to make some decisions. Do I want to do it indoors? And do I have, do I have the lighting system that I need for that? Um, I'll link some videos to help you out uh, in the description to my main YouTube channel that will explain lighting and I have a good series or a good video already on 30 questions about seed starting indoors. Once you get the lighting set up, you have to think about 
how are you going to start your seeds? A lot of people start them in the small cells. This is what you can find at most of your big box stores. I sell these at my seed shop. The bigger cells are nicer because if you're only, say you're only growing what's in the series and you only need one or two of each of the varieties of peppers or tomatoes, well, we, we would put them in here, we would label them, and they can actually grow in here the entire period for the six, eight, ten weeks that you need them to grow. You don't have to up pot. If you start them here in the smaller cells, you're going to have to up pot them into something bigger. If you don't want to use the cells, you can go ahead and get anywhere from 8 ounce to 12 ounce, 12 ounce cups. Make sure you put holes in the bottom. There's no holes in there because I use that to water my succulents. But make sure you have holes in there. You always want good drainage. You should never let your seed starts sit in the container with water that doesn't have drainage. They will get root rot and they will die out. I um, like to start mine in these flats. I bottom water, which means as you, well, I'll show you how to do that. We plant the seeds, we fill the bottom of the tray, water is absorbed from the bottom. That's really important. Keeps your plants clean, um, and I'll explain that when we get to there in a little bit. If you don't want a big setup like this, you can get some Pyrex dishes just like that. Maybe pick up some of these cells, and that's all you might need is you're starting your peppers or tomatoes or whatever you want. And the wider you get them, the more you can put in there. You can go and get the foil baking tins uh, of any kind of size. If you're, you know, if you've baked lasagna or a rigatoni, ziti, and something, you can get a big foil tin, and these will drop in perfectly there. If you can't find the flats like that, so you got to make a decision again. How many plants do you want? Well, I seed start maybe three, four hundred tomatoes and peppers, if not more, tons of herbs. By the time I'm done, I'm probably seed starting almost a thousand plants. So make some decisions, decide how you want to start your plants. Again, if you use the bigger cells, the bigger cups, your plants can stay in there until they're ready to go outside and you don't have to pot them up. If you start them in something smaller, somewhere around three to five weeks, they're going to have to go into bigger cells. All right, I needed to do a quick cut just to get this stuff set up. No need for you to hear me dragging everything around. So we got a little bit of discussion about lighting, decisions if you're going to start indoors, what kind of seed starting cells or cups you want to use. Next question is, well, what do I plant them in? You can't, well, you can, but I don't recommend it. You can't go outside and get garden dirt, garden soil, earth, anything that's been outside. If you bring it inside and you put it in these cells, anything that might be in there, fungus, diseases, insect eggs are going to hatch and they're just going to go crazy. There's no nature indoors, so there's nothing to really regulate the good stuff, the bad stuff. So you don't want to go outside and bring in any outdoor gardening soil or any kind of dirt and mix it in your starting mix. You want to pick up bag starting mix. It doesn't matter what brand I use. The Jiffy Mix, that's what you see just about everywhere. It's 12 dry quarts. Uh, Burpee has some out. It looks like this one is made out of cocoa core. The other one was made out of peat moss. You can use either one. You can buy both. You can mix it. There's a thousand ways to garden. And I am just want to give you the principles so that you feel comfortable getting started. So you would pick up a bag of the starting mix, 12 quarts. 12 quarts takes care of about two full flats. So you could plant in here are six cells at 72 cells in a flat and you can really do actually two and a half cells with one bag of starting mix. Now when you buy the starting mix it typically has risk of having something called fungus net eggs in it. Fungus net eggs are insects. The fungus net eggs, well they will be insects, they can last through cold and through freeze and when you bring them again into your nice home you get everything started like this, the eggs hatch and it pose a, uh, cause a problem. The larva, when the flying insects lay more eggs, crawl down into your root system, they eat your, eat your plant roots and it weakens them and they usually die off if you get a big infestation. So when you get a starting mix, this one has the peat moss in it. Usually the peat based starting mixes are at a greater risk of having the fungus net eggs. This one's cocoa core, I haven't tested it out but I would also assume that there's a chance to have fungus gnat eggs in there. Why is that important? You take 
12 quarts. I have videos on this too. I'll throw a link in if you want to see it in more detail. But your starting mix comes out dry. You don't want to put dry mix into your cells there and then try and plant your seeds because if you do, that dry mix is actually going to float. It's not going to absorb water and it's a mess. So you have to pre-moisten your starting mix. And what I recommend is doing it with boiling water. Boiling water will kill off any fungus mold or fungus gnat eggs in there. Sometimes some still get through, but this is a great way to preemptively take care of any potential problems. So this is 12 quarts. It's already been done. I get a big wooden spoon, of course. Don't mix this with your hand if it's boiling water. But you put in a pot full of water just across the top. You want to be able to put in enough moisture that when you squeeze this, maybe only one or two drops come out. This is a couple days old, so it's drying up a little bit, but it's moist enough. So the hot water, the boiling water, will take care of problems in there, and it creates a nice sterile starting mix or pretty close to it. Now, uh, people ask me, you know, aren't you killing the soil life in there? Aren't there problems with putting boiling water, water in there and killing off all the good stuff? In these starting mixes, there is no soil life. There's no soil biology. There's nothing beneficial. This is just peat moss and vermiculite. The other stuff is probably just cocoa core, maybe some of this. Nothing is living in the soil that is beneficial to your seed starts. So don't worry about damaging soil life in there or microbes. Microbes do help your plants out. We'll talk about that in other videos and over time when I'm out in the garden. But your seed starting mix is sterile. There's no life to it. That's what you want to start your seeds in. Get them started, get them going. You don't have to put any fertilizer in here. We're going to feed these with a water soluble fertilizer. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. But I do, you know, when I'm at home, I use worm castings. The company that I use is Vermisterra. I highly recommend them. And I think in the video I said one to two cups per 12 quart bag of starting mix. I just take a handful sprinkle it in, mix it through. You're going slow and low. Worm castings are, as I always say, the end product of nature. They provide good microbes for your soil. So we take the sterile soil, we put in boiling water, we kill out anything that's bad potentially, and that's mostly the risk of fungus gnat eggs. And then you can add back in soil biology, and I'm doing it with worm castings. Again, you don't have to do this, it's just one way um, that I prefer to do it. And again, there's a thousand ways to do this. So rule number one, don't overstress. You don't have to copy everybody on YouTube. You don't have to do it perfectly. You don't have to be, you know, the gardeners you see on TV. You just got to do it your own way. And I can tell you that your vegetable seeds want to grow. You really have to work hard to kill everything off. So even on a bad day, on a bad week, or if this is your first year and there's a learning curve, you're still going to get nice production. And in the description, I will put links that explains more of some of the stuff I'm talking about because I could go on for hours and hours and hours. So that's the quick overview of getting your seed starts ready or getting ready to start your seeds. And again, if you go to my channel, we're going to be focusing on seven different varieties of peppers, seven different varieties of tomatoes. We have two kinds of lettuce. We have a lettuce mescaline mix, a radish mix, and I have some bigger packages that include cucumber, zucchinis, uh, cucumbers, zucchini, squash, and things that can kind of be set up for your first vegetable garden. So these have been growing almost four weeks. I got them started. I wanted to show you what they look like. We are going to start primarily peppers and tomatoes today. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to thin them down so they look like this. I'm going to talk to you about bottom watering. When you're watering, you wait for your saturated soil. That's nice and dark. It's been watered yesterday. This has not been watered and you can see the top is a light brown. It goes back to the dry color of your starting mix. That's how you know when to water. We're also going to feed these with a water-soluble fertilizer. So you are getting a big introduction today on seed starting. We're also going to get some of the lettuces started. 
you can grow lettuce actually indoors. It's, it's probably the easiest plant to grow indoors um, for harvest. Uh, these are going to go outside in another video, but we'll talk about that too. All right, so let's start with getting set up. I'm going to actually have to switch the camera to a stand so that I can work with both hands. But let's get to seed starting the tomatoes and peppers. Oh, real quick, let me just show you what we have. Uh, starting right, going left. That's a Rutgers tomato, Mr. Stripey tomato, Jubilee, sweet banana pepper, Cubanelle pepper, Marconi red pepper, cayenne red slim pepper, California wonder, jalapeno, um, that's Paris Island lettuce, and I forget what this one is. That's Paris Island, and this is a, forgot the name, it's a <laughs> red leaf lettuce. These are uh, generally, oh, we got the Mar Globe, the beef steak, black crim, and large red, or black cherry, and large red cherry. These are the main uh, plants in the seed package, Grows I Grow. This is what you're going to see me take care of for the entire season. So let's get started with setting up the smaller cells to grow our peppers and our tomatoes. All right, now I know I covered a lot of information, so let's just do a quick recap. We're starting plants indoors because we want to get a jump on a growing season. We can use the small cells. If we do that, we're going to have to pot up. That's what I'm going to use today, and that's what I mostly use. You can get bigger cells. Plant in here. You're going to have fewer plants, but you have to decide how many you need for your garden space. You know, for instance, my garden is going to be 40 by 80 feet, and there's going to be probably 20 raised beds in there. You can start them in here. You can start them in cups, and then you won't have to pot up. When you're starting indoors, you're not going to be able to use a window. You're going to have to use grow lights. And actually, um, after we get to planting, I'm going to show you a little bit about the grow lights so you have an idea of what you might have to buy. And the video that I link in the descriptions, um, the videos that I link in the descriptions will be really helpful in figuring out how to set up a grow light station. It is really easy and you'll be really proud of yourself once you do it and you have plants growing in there. So this is what we'll have in about, let's see if I put a date on here wisely. I did. So these were started on February 2nd. Today is February 23rd or 4th, actually, lost track of the day. So in about, let's say, three weeks, this is the growth you're going to get. And you can see that tomatoes tend to grow quicker. Peppers grow a little bit more slowly. They take longer to germinate. So when you are deciding when to start your tomatoes and when to start your peppers, you do it this way. These are the main plants we're talking about. We are going to cover lettuce too. These are warm season crops. They can't take a frost. They don't like the cold. So you figure out in your area when the temperatures, the average night temperatures are about 50 degrees. You don't need to go out into the yard and, you know, take the temperature out of the ground. But you want to kind of look it up, figure out when you're getting rains and it's 50 degrees, um, frost is gone, you want warm earth. If you plant your transplants into cold earth, where it's like 40 degrees, they just sit there. So you figure out about the time, you know you're getting warm nights, 50 degree soil, 50 degree rains, and you count backwards. Six to eight weeks backwards for tomatoes. You don't want these to grow past eight weeks. They turn into bonsai plants. They start to flower and form fruit six to eight weeks. You can even seed start um, four weeks before they would go outside um, and they're going to be a little bit bigger than this. That's perfectly fine to put in the ground. Peppers can grow longer in these seed cells indoors. So you count back 12 to eight weeks and that's when you figure out when to start. Um, most of mine I'm going to put out probably later April. Um, my soil is going to be a little bit cold but I do some tricks to warm up the area. Uh, but mostly my stuff goes out, you know, the first week of May. So let's pull the lettuce out because we're not going to concentrate on that right now. And we're going to seed start peppers. And one thing about peppers is the different varieties germinate at different speeds. You can see some are bigger, some are just starting to break the surface. You want your room temperature really to be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or higher for peppers um, and tomatoes. If you're in the 60s, it, it takes a little bit longer for the peppers to germinate. 
I just moved to a farmhouse and I can tell you this year with this house being drafty and cold, the peppers are taking a lot longer, almost by 10 days to germinate. Um, I could put a heat mat under there, but we're not going to talk about that today. Um, that would warm the bottom of the soil, warm the seeds, and they germinate more quickly. All right, and then those are our tomatoes. It's pretty straightforward. Let me grab a cell. And we're going to do just the six pack. There's something in between, too. So you could do these. You're going to have to pot up. You could do just a four pack. You have more space in here, and these will probably be fine for about six weeks. And again, you could grab the bigger ones, or you could use styrofoam cups. You could use 12 ounce of these uh, green solo cups, whatever you want to use. It'll be all right. So let's just go with this, keep it simple. You fill it with your pre-moistened starting mix. And I always like to show people this because this is really important. Fill it and then press it down. You want a nice, solid starting base. And then just fill it again off camera there. And then you have a solid starting base. We're going to go ahead and plant. <laughs> you know, I got this all set up and I forgot to grab seeds. So let's go with the peppers and I'm going to grab some from over here. These are the Cubanel. These are the seed packs you can get from me. Those are the radishes. That's the lettuce mix. These are the 10 packs of the different varieties and there's peppers and tomatoes back there. Um, Cubanel peppers. And you would do this for all the different varieties of peppers. There's seven different varieties and it's pretty simple. You just take one seed, I put them one in each corner They're big, they're easy to handle. And the reason you're doing two peppers, for two reasons. One, if you have a germination problem and some of them don't germinate, you're putting more peppers in here, so you increase the odds of getting peppers. And a lot of people don't know this, you can actually grow two peppers in the same space and almost double your, your production. I've been doing that for years. So you have your peppers and you're just gonna press it down about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't need to be perfect. You could go down a half an inch. Just get it below the surface. And that's all you need to do to seed start peppers. So simple cells like this. Larger cup if you want to do that. You would take the soil up to here. Don't put the soil down there. Take the soil up to there and you could drop in three seeds in a bigger cup. Make sure, you know, you're increasing your risk for getting a viable plant and you could thin it out to the strongest plant or two. Once you have that down, make sure you label it. Those are cubanelles. And today's date, like I said, is the 23rd or the 24th, and then you mark it. Now, peppers, just so you know, are going to germinate if you're closer to 80 degrees and you're like using a heat mat, they're going to germinate really quickly, maybe in seven days. If it's in the 70 degree days, 70 degree temperatures, Fahrenheit, it's going to be somewhere between a week to two weeks. If you're in the lower temperatures in the 60s, it can take anywhere from two to three weeks for your peppers to germinate. Peppers can also take up to four weeks to germinate depending on the variety. So the warmer, the better into the 80s for peppers. And that's just how you set up all your peppers and this will be successful. I mean, this is a successful way to plant your peppers. It's worked for me for 20 years and you will have success yourself. All right, so the next step, um, incidentally, these are beef steaks that I'm growing for a contest. Um, put them into bigger cells so I don't need to be potting them up. So let's do the tomatoes again. Uh, let's just do the bigger cell. So if you start with the bigger cells, you're saving yourself a step of having to pot these up uh, into something like this or into the cup. Again, you're gonna fill it up. Let me get off screen there. 
this is too loose, so just press it down. I just heard the ding on the computer too. If you want to follow me on Facebook, I'll put the link in there. It'll take you to the Rusted Garden Facebook group, and you can follow me on Instagram. And I'm going to use those uh, social media sources to really let us interact and talk with each other, help each other out, show off our progress, all that kind of stuff. All right, so let me grab some tomatoes from over here. What do we have? Those are peppers. Let's do the Mar Globe tomato. <laughs> this is kind of funny. So my brother helps me with the seed shop. Um, fulfill orders and stuff like that. He's in New York. He sent me these because he set up his packaging. These are just props. There's no seeds in there. So, excuse me a second. I gotta step over here and grab some seeds. And we're gonna grow the Mar Globe as soon as I can find them here. And I'll give you a little look into my seed shop. I usually, I save a lot of seeds and sell them for the tomato plants. The other stuff I order from different companies. So this is what you get. I order bulk seeds and then I repackage them and sell them. So we have the Marglobe tomato seeds, a little bit smaller and something like this. One or two seeds in each corner. You can't grow two tomatoes in one space. They get way too big. You can only do that with peppers. And you get a lot of tomato seeds. So don't worry if too many fall. If you store your peppers, your tomatoes, and your seeds in Ziploc bags, and you can see all I do, push them down a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. They will all come up. And that's all you really need to do for seed starting your peppers and tomatoes. And again, we would mark this down, mar globe, whatever today's date is, and put it in there. So once you have this done, you have to water them. And bottom watering is the most effective way to do it. One, it saves you time. If I had to fill this up and then go and pour it on top of each of these, that takes a long time versus just throwing in two cups here, letting the water absorb. Not only does it save you time, but it's more hygienic. If I'm pouring water on here, I'm going to be splashing soil around. If there's a disease or fungal problem, maybe just with this area, I'm going to splash it over here. When the seeds haven't germinated yet, I could wash the seeds out. I could wash the seeds down. So always just bottom water. And let's use this as an example. So you just fill it up to about a quarter inch or half inch deep. And we're not going to water those. We're going to water this one. And I'm going to, I'll show you why. Because the question I get a lot is, when do I water? And you water when the tops have dried. This is well saturated. Your seed starts always dry from the top first. And then they work their way down. And if timing works out here. Hold on. They should be moist down at the bottom, and they are. So they dry from the top down, and they'll be fine for a couple of days. So it'll dry, dry, dry. But you can see that it's still moist down here, dry up top. The roots are getting plenty of water. The reason you want the tops to dry is because it helps manage fungus and molds when they need moisture. So if the top dries out, the fungus and molds uh, can't multiply, can't do their thing. It helps keep the plants um, clean. Also, fungus gnats come up here, they lay eggs, they need moisture. If you let this dry, it helps control any possible problems with fungus gnats. 
So when you see the top dry, you know within a couple of days you're going to have to water them. There's always holes. Always make sure you have holes. And you just drop it in there. And it will absorb water. That's going to darken. We'll get back that, to that in a second. And basically, you know, with practice, you figure out how much water you need to put in here. And then within 30 minutes, the plants usually take up all the water that they need. You can't leave the water in there for really you know, past 24 hours, you can cause a problem. Um, call, it's called root rot. It's where too much water sits down here. The roots rot. You get an oxygen problem. So really, after an hour or so, dump out the excess water. You can wait 24 hours if you have to. All right. So as you noticed, well, first we planted. Then within about two or three weeks, you're going to get germination of your peppers. Really within five to ten days, you're going to get germination of your tomatoes. And when I do these cells, sometimes I put in more seeds. And you basically, let me see if I can grab the scissors. You want to thin these down to one plant. Um, you don't want to pull out the plants that you're not going to keep because if you do that, you disturb the roots. So you're just going to cut the weakest ones. I know people hate to do that. These are a little bit over planted because I was test germinating, but normally I would just put in two or three seeds like you saw me do in the bigger container. And then you just leave the largest plant in there. And you'll have your main tomato plant in there. So those two have been thinned down and they're going to look something like this and when they get to this point and to this size your tomato plants are ready for feeding and I'm actually going to save that for the next video because I can go into a lot of detail about that so that's the general setup we start with the basic seed starting mix maybe put in some worm castings or something else you don't have to get your seeds in get them under grow lights all right, let me reach over, grab those lettuces. Now, lettuce is probably one of the easiest things to grow. These are again from the Grows I Grow series, and they were started on January 27th. So this is almost four weeks of growth. They've been in here a little bit too long. But I want to show you one thing that I did. So I started them in these six cells. I popped one out. This was about probably seven or eight days ago when they should have been split. You can see this is a bunch of seeds. We're going to go over planting in a second. When you do these lettuce plugs, when you do the overseeded method, we're just going to go and plant these and grow them for small leaves. When they get to about this size, we cut the leaves off, leave the roots in the ground, we harvest the leaves, we use them in our, in our uh, salads. Because we leave the root system in the ground, more leaves come. Lettuce, lettuces, your greens, love the cool weather. They can take a light frost, they can go out really in April. Um, we seed start them indoors so that they germinate. Once they germinate, they can do well in 40 degree soil, um, 40 degree days, they can even handle 30 degree nights, 28 degree nights, they can take a frost. We germinate them inside so that when we put them outside, they're not waiting for the right temperature to germinate and we get our lettuces growing more quickly. So if you make a plug, I'm going to show you how to do that. After about three weeks, you just tear it right down the middle and then you could put them into bigger containers. And that's what I did here. If you'll notice, three cells are missing here. I just broke them just like I showed you, dropped them into these bigger cells, and they've already outgrown some of the smaller ones. When you keep things in smaller containers, they look healthy, but their roots get bound and the leaves don't develop as well. So you really have to make sure you manage your time of potting up. These are ready to go outside. These are going to be going into a video where I'm actually putting my water in here now but I flip this over and make a cloche and these will grow really well. 
during my cold weather. I'm getting sometimes still nighttime temperatures down into the 20s and teens. But you can start your lettuce indoors and you can push it outside early and you can do some things to keep it warm around the environment. You create a micro environment and they grow really well. You can also let these grow at this point on a sunny windowsill. The grow lights are most important for the germinating seeds and I'll talk about that when we move over there. So if you want to make um, lettuce plugs, it's real simple. Start with the cell. These I do know we have. This is the mix that you get. And you basically just take a handful of seed. This is mixed lettuce. We're putting in anywhere from 8 to 12 seeds, maybe 15, maybe more, into each cell. We're going to get these germinated. They germinate extremely quickly, sometimes within five days in about two weeks after germination. So you always say, when do you transplant? You wait from the germinate and you count from there. You don't say, I'm transplanting four weeks because sometimes your seeds could take two or three weeks to germinate. So when these germinate in about five days, about two weeks after that, we're going to want to up pot them or get them outside. This is a little bit dry. This was a prop tray. But you just mix them in just like that. You're not worried that every seed gets covered. And you would just press it in. The tops are a little bit dry, but these would get bottom watered. You would label it, and that's how easy it is to start lettuces just like this. That's the simple process I did for all of this, and look how much lettuce there is. When this gets outside, it's good again, going to grow three, four inches tall, maybe a little bit taller. I'm going to cut it and use it sort of as baby lettuces. If you want to grow these to full head sizes, you would just put in one or two seeds, press them in, and then you're going to thin to one plant. And then you could get, you know, like a full head of romaine or something like that. I like doing my lettuces this way because you get just as much. Now again, I've been working my YouTube channels, so to speak, for six or seven years. So I have tons of videos, almost 800. I'm going to link in more details about seed starting your tomatoes and the grow lights, you know, so that I'm just giving you an overview here. But if you wanted to set something up, it's not expensive. You don't need to go and buy specialized grow lights. They're kind of a ripoff. They charge you two, three times as much. You just need a shelf. You can see that you can fit two uh, flats in here like this. You can put them in this way and then put one long ways and you get three in there. You can get the receptacles that have two fluorescent bulbs. You just put two in there. That will really cover three flats. And if I actually bought a shelving unit that was just a little bit wider, this wouldn't have to stick out this way. It could slide right in there. You can also find the LED bulbs or receptacles. And I think this was about 20 bucks at, I think, Walmart. And you can just set it up like this. And it gives enough light for your seed starch. You can put foil on the side and drop it down. And every once in a while, you can move this here for one day, move it back to the middle of the next day, and then over a little more the next day. But this is what you need to seed start. And notice that the distance is about two inches. You can't, it's not really worth seed starting unless you set up these grow lights because your plants are going to be thin and leggy and they're just not going to do well. All right, let's go down to our grow as I grow plants. And again, you can pick these up at my seed shop. I did remember when I saw this, the other lettuce is called Salad Bowl Red. So you can get two different 10 packs. You can get a seven pack of tomatoes, a seven pack of peppers. Those are all the different peppers that I'll be growing. And really, in about three weeks or so from your start of uh, starting your seeds, you could have something like this. And it saves you a lot of money. There's one, two, three, four, five, at least six peppers. Sometimes I leave two in there. So six peppers, 12 peppers, 18 peppers, 24 tomato plants, plenty of lettuce. If you go and try and buy these as, you know, transplants, um, you know, at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, whatever, they're going to be two, three, four dollars a plant, depending on what you're buying. So just times that by really possibly, um, 36 cells here of tomatoes and peppers. That's a lot of money. You're going to save money by starting stuff indoors. It's a lot of fun. You can be successful and just leave questions in the comments.
follow me on Instagram, follow me in the Facebook group, ask your questions, and I will, and you know, the uh, seasoned gardeners will help you be successful. Again, general overview of how to get started, and I will link in more uh, specific videos that detail how you do the stuff I showed you today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and episode two will be out in about, I don't know, let's say 10 to 14 days. Thanks for watching.